Right then, we're here this morning to show you how we remove gib keys, because one or two of you are having problems with them. We've set out a basic line of tools and things, and we're gonna run through this. Now, this is not the only way of doing it, we do appreciate that, but this is the way that we do it, and it works for us. And in actual fact, I've been doing this the same way for about, uh, about 40 years now, something like that. Because uh, I used to be a, used to be a combine fitter, and uh, trust me, you get some gib keys on those and big bodies that are absolute bastards. Uh, but this method works. First of all, because when we did our, our gasket cutting video, we got a bit of a, a, a bit of thing about no safety. Well, there's your safety glasses. Now, what you do with those, you throw those over there, and then you've got your sissy mitts. Those are for you guys who worried about your hands. I also throw those over there because we don't need them. We don't want them. Right now, then, what we've got is a basic toolkit. My brush, memory cloth, uh, we've got our lubrications. I find brake fluid is a very good penetrative, it's a nice thin oil, so it works better than some of your thicker oils. WD-40 of course. Now these are the bits of kit that we that are, that are, are, are important for the job. It's a key drift, it's a curved one, and this is a straight key drift. Now they've got a taper on them. Uh, this side, the bottom side here, is thicker than the top and always goes in with the thick side. I don't know if you can actually see it. You may be able to see it like that, yeah? yeah? That always goes in so that fits onto the head of the key like that, yeah? Uh, you can get these from any class dealership. Now it's class combine dealership. They are only made by class and that is what is where you'll get them from. This is a very old fashioned spanner. Now these used to be sort of like Fordson Major spanners now, I would recommend that you go out and find one of these, because these are so invaluable for this job. They really are. If you had to pay 10 quid for it, you'd think it was well spent when I show you how we use it. Now, I know a lot of you also use G-clamps for this job. Now, the G-clamps have a serious failing that you will see when we get around to using this. Decent sized hammer, yeah? You don't know sissy hammers because you're gonna want a decent hammer, yeah? And we'll show you why you want a decent hammer. A block of hardwood, like that, um, as well. That's handy. Or, better still, a piece of brass, yeah? So, you use these, and we'll, well, all in part of this job. Right, now we'll get to it. Um, we will admit that due to the sort of like speeding this video up, it's gonna be quite a long video, we've already, taken this pulley off this morning it took us about i'd say 10 maybe 15 minutes uh we've got it off so that it's it, it speeds up the process with a video so we're not trying to pull a fast one we're not being clever dicks and some of you are going to say oh you've already had that bloody pulley off well yes we have and we're admitting it we've had it off to make your life easy right then what we need i'll get the tools we need Right, these are the tools that I'm going to use. Hammer, key drift, lump of brass. And yet another one of those spanners. Um, made in England, as I said, I believe they were they were part of the Fordson Major Toolkit. Try and find one. Right, what you need to do, first things you need to do, we're going to teach you how to suck eggs, some of you, because not all of us were born uh, accomplished engineers. Some of us had to learn as we go. I know some of you probably think you were born geniuses. But I've got news for you, you bloody weren't. Right, now then, the shaft. Clean the shaft up, yeah? Get the shaft nice and clean, okay? Nobody likes a dirty shaft. You're gonna get nowhere with one of those. So get your shaft clean, all right? Now, nice clean shaft, bit of lubrication. Out comes the WD-40, I like WD-40. Like this, spray a bit on there like that, okay? That'll all soak in, spray around the back. Now then, if my cameraman comes around here, I'm gonna show you what we like to find. What we like to find is a gap between the pulley and the actual housing. I don't know if you're gonna see that, it's a bit dark in here, but hopefully you will. Now, when you refit these pulleys, you always wanna leave that gap behind. I'll show you why. Right, what we do, we get a key drift. We, we, I like to use the curved one. Curved one, some applications, straight one, other applications. We put the key drift in there like that, and I know some of you are working on your own, so I'll show you how we do it on our own. You just get a little nip on the key drift like that. Then you get this spanner, okay? Now, 
it's important that you put it on from the side that you're driving, not the side you're driving to. That will mean the spanner will actually then travel off. If you put it on here, adjust it up to your shaft like that, so that, that is nice and tight on there, as tight as you can get it, okay? Now then, again, the importance, lubrication. You do need lubrication, okay? If you wanna know about lubrication, how important it is, ask the wife, she'll tell you. Brake fluid, we've already done this, so I'm not gonna put more brake fluid on. I like brake fluid, it penetrates very, very well. Now then, the lump of brass. Now what we do is, we've got, oh, hang on. What we do, we set our key drift with our spanner, like that. So that is now set, all right? Now what you do with the lump of brass, and you've got to hit it, there's no good tapping it. You can do the same with a piece of wood, but the brass is better. You put it on your pulley, flywheel, pulley, whichever it is you're using, okay? Wait for the camera out to get in position. Right, now what you do, you give this a good hit. You don't sissy it, you give it a welt, all right? Now, if I welt it, <coughs> that pulley's gonna fly on, and this is all gonna fail. But what you do, you give this a good welt, I'm just gonna tap it like that. Now what that does, that drives the pulley on or the flywheel on to that all important gap behind. Now that, once you get this flywheel to move, that gib key is as good as already out. So now what we do, we're assuming I'll give that a well, I might have to, because we've driven this in a bit hard actually. So what we do now, we hold this down here like this, and we just tap this through here like this. Now that's going, all right? Now you hold it here like this, and you tap it through here like this, look. Look, and that's drawing it. The, the spanner, <coughs> this spanner holds the drift down. So it doesn't rise out of the key like that, because it will rise out of the key. And as it rises out of the key, it completely shags this head. You want to use these again if you can, because they're not, some of them are not that easy to find, especially the petal ones. So, something like that, make sure it's tight. We drive it through like that, look. Now, trust me when I say to you that this key came out this easy when we did it first off. It didn't come out that bit easy, but it actually moved as easy as what we said, okay? So we take the gib key out, we give out a little twist with our lubrication. We, we can put the drift behind it on something that's not hollow and solid, just to move it, and it'll move a little bit. Lubricate behind, push it back on, drive it back on, pull it, look, Get it so it'll twist like that. As soon as you've got your twist, off it comes, okay? So that comes off of there like that, piece of cake. Right, now we get, I'm gonna do two videos in one in. This is quite important. Now, when you're refitting it, okay, dry your shaft off like that so you've got a nice dry shaft, nice clean shaft, or as clean as you can get it, then that pitting is acceptable. What you need is copper slip. Now this is a grease with copper in it. It's made for this job, okay? Get a little bit on your finger like that, because you can wash your hands. You put on there like this, okay? On your shaft like that. <coughs> okay, we do it like that. Then we get our pulley. You can put some in the pulley, or flywheel, as I keep getting told. It's in a proper pulley. And a proper flywheel, it's not a petal one, it's a little tiny thing. Now you put this on here like this, and when you put it on, you give it a spin, like that, okay? Now that'll work that copper slip in. Now that copper slip will never go hard. So if you have to go back in there, that's just gonna come off with your hands. <coughs> when you're fitting it, make sure you've got that little gap behind it. You've got a little gap behind it. I know this is a massive gap, but just use your imagination a little bit if some of you can. Put it on so you've got a little gap behind where your, where your back of your boss is and your housing here. That means that if you should need to, you can give it a well, on it will go, gib key will come out. Now that's really, really simple, really, really easy. Um, gib keys go back in, obviously, so you know, you know, put those in, don't teach those. Again, wanna make the job easy? 
Make sure your gib key's got a little bit of, you know, clean on the back. Little bit of copper slip. On there again, on there again, on the surfaces where it's going to hold. Put it in, and before them you say, oh, that bloody key will let go and come out, it won't. Trust me, if you've fitted it properly, you've knocked it home tight, it ain't coming out, no matter how much bloody grease you put on it, it ain't coming out. I've fitted more gib keys and took more gib keys out than most dentists of full teeth. All right, I'm not boasting about that, I'm just letting you know. So that is how we do it, just to run through your tools. You've got your curved key drift, you've got your straight key drift, made by class combines, four class combines, class dealership. I've got no idea what they cost, don't worry about the cost, buy them. You need them, buy them, they work. Tried and tested. And if you can, find yourself one of those. You can get me various sizes, look, we're lucky enough to have two of them. Get those, all right? That's what you want. Because they hold the key drifts down so they don't rise out and mess your heads up. Now, I know some of you are gonna criticize this video and some of you are gonna love it. Um, if we've helped a few of you, which I hope we yeah, have, and I'm pretty sure we will have done. Because I know a lot of you, I see it on the site a lot of the time, a lot of you complain about not getting them out. If there's anything else you'd like to know that we haven't covered in this little short video, um, or if, you know, if you've got any suggestions, or you've got a better idea, let's yeah, say so some of you will have, let us know. Uh, we'd like to help. If you want us to make a video about a particular thing, um, let us know what you'd like to see and learn. Um, we'll show you how we do it. We've got quite a few engines here that we've had to in various ways. Hope you enjoy it. Look forward to your comments. Catch you all later. Bye-bye from Chris and Jack.